many dogs, many owners come in with a bag like this with a sample. This one has a semi-form stool. It's not real bad diarrhea, but it's got a lot of blood in it. First of all, that's a big poop for this little dog. When I first saw this, I didn't see the dog first. I saw the poop first. I thought, you know, it could be a lab cross. But you did good. You got rid of it. Diarrhea, soft stools, and blood in the poop are all real common causes of why a dog comes in the veterinary hospital. We probably see two dogs a day with bowel problems. One of the real common problems dogs can have is, um, or causes, is they can eat something that they shouldn't be, which causes diarrhea. Um, they can get a hold of a toy, uh, a piece of plastic, rubber bands, foil, baseball cap, some of these underwear, um, grass, um, can all cause diarrhea, or eating something out of the garbage in a little baggie. All that will irritate the bowel. Another thing that can cause diarrhea is a change of food. Um, if a dog's used to one food and then you feed it another type of food, it can get diarrhea because some dogs are sensitive to grains. Wheat is the number one sensitivity. Or certain, they can even be allergic to certain meats in the food like chicken or beef. And those dogs do better on fish or duck. Another thing is treats. All those commercial treats in the grocery stores like the little ones that look like a bone, they can, they're probably one of the real common causes of diarrhea. So they will actually or cause uh, a dog to have a semi-normal looking stool and have red blood come out, and that's called a colitis. So that's what th this dog looks like it's, it's faced with, and so we're going to check it out. But we always do a fecal exam so that we can make sure that this dog, this isn't a dog, but you know what I mean, this, this dog that, that owned this poop doesn't have giardia or coccidia or worms. The worms are much less common on adult dogs. The most common bug that we see that causes diarrhea and problems are, is giardia. And young puppies, it's coccidia. And also worms can cause problems in young dogs. We one of the first things we do when we get a fecal sample is we look for parasites like Giardia and Coccidia and worms and Michelle's going to show us how she does that. One of your best parts of your jobs? jobs? You know, I actually don't mind this because you can see a lot of interesting thing in fecal samples. I think people kind of discount them, but I think fecal samples can sometimes be very telling. So it's important, important diagnostic tool. So what are you doing there? Well, I made sure the dog, they were complaining about some mucus and blood in the stool, so I made sure I grabbed some of that. And I'm just grabbing a little bit, and now I'm going to mix it with some saline. That way, whatever little interesting uh, buggies are in there, we can mix them into a solution before we put them on a slide. And can we do a fecal float, too? We absolutely can. And we can show everybody how we do that. So this is mixing it up for the direct smear, right? Yes. Again, I want to mix it up really good and get a nice cloudy solution. Let me show that. Ooh. You can see some blood floating that in there. That almost looks like a little shot glass. <laughs> Not a shot glass I'd drink from, though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Couple of drops on my slide. Oh, let's see that. I'm going to add my slip cover so it spreads out nice and even. And then we'll read that under the microscope. So what are you doing now? Now I'm going to get a float. This is called a fecalizer. There's an insert that sits inside. We remove that insert. And we're going to get fecal sample. It's usually a, at least a gram that fills up this bottom right here. So the clients could take that home, huh? Yes, and we do give them instructions on how to do that. It kind of makes it easier for us. So you poke us. it right in the poop? Right in the poop. Get a good poopy sample. So when the clients bring us the bags filled with poop, they don't really need to bring that much, do they? No. But they usually bring us plenty. So where are you putting that now? So now I'm going to put it in the base here. I'm going to set this here and I'm going to grab my fecal soap solution, which is usually a 
Oh, it's like a nitrate solution nitrate. that's in here. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna up. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way. I'm gonna fill it part way, and then I'm gonna agitate like a wash machine Ooh, because nice. again, we want to loosen. If there's eggs in there, Is we want to loosen it up. No. <laughs> So again, we're going to mix it up. Now I can twist it and press it all the way down. And now we can fill it to the top till we get a nice bubble. Great. And if you get a nice bubble, that means, what is that for? That way we can put our slip cover on it. And then if there's eggs in there, that solution causes eggs to rise to the top and stick to my slip cover. Great. And for you, those of you watching, I'm actually kind of know the answers in case you think, why is a veterinarian answer, asking these questions? But it's just because I wanted to bring be bring up in the discussion. So we put a slip, slip cover on there. Yep, and now we need to wait 15 minutes before so we can check So this little it. slide cover is on there, as you can see, and it's uh, all the little eggs are floating up to the top and they're going to attach, kind of attach the bottom of that slide. And then we can look at it under the microscope and see if there's any bugs in there. So, All right. so what are you doing now? Well, it's been sitting here for about 15 minutes. The timer went off. So it's time for us to go ahead, remove that slip cover, and just very carefully put it on a slide. Great. We're going to look at it under the microscope. Great. So what do we look for when we look uh, on a direct smear, which is a fecal sample mixed with saline? We look for the type of bacteria, the amount of bacteria, and we look for eggs and cysts of parasites um, like Giardia and Coccidia and worms. And uh, that tells us a lot about what's causing the diarrhea in um, a dog or a cat. We And the float when the eggs float up and attach the bottom of that cover slip, um, little cysts like these Giardia cysts can uh, uh, attach the bottom and that lets us diagnose Giardia or coccidian worm eggs may look something like that. They're bit like this. They're bigger and they have, uh, they look actually look like eggs. So uh, that's what we use when we do the direct smears and the sli slides. If your dog has blood in the stool because um, it can lead to serious complications, but if your dog looks happy and healthy, you can even just fast them uh, for a day, um, then feed them some white rice, and uh, sometimes that will take care of the stool. But what I do, what I'm doing, which you saw, is I test the stool for uh, Giardia and worms, and I'm going to send this little one home on some metronidazole. And that ought to clear the, 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 the uh, blood up. Uh, I didn't see any real parasites in the stool. There was an overgrowth of bacteria and some yeast. Well, this is part of the video where I always try to correct any mistakes I made. or And I did, this one didn't go as smooth as I wanted to because I had trouble editing the different tracks. Um, but I hope you got the gist of the conversation. If a dog gets diarrhea, which they commonly do in my practice, um, it can be due to them getting a hold of something they're not used to, such as um, if you fed your dog the same thing all the time, dry food. Sometimes wet food uh, can cause it because some canned foods from the grocery store have a lot of weed in them, or just the change in ingredients can cause diarrhea. Another thing I forgot to mention in the video is sometimes a commercial dog food will change the ingredients and you think you're feeding the same thing, but you're really not. It's different ingredients. So you got to check that. You always got to think of, did I get my dog anything different? Did I get a new treat from the store? Many treats, like I talk about in the video, are filled with wheat glutens and uh, some preserving chemicals. And some dogs just do not tolerate them, especially toy breeds. So if you have a little toy breed, Yorkie, Maltese, they're very commonly affected by eating treats uh, that they can't tolerate. Just like if you ate Cheerios your whole life and all of a sudden you ate a big piece of beef, that wouldn't make your stomach and intestines feel too good either. So dogs commonly come in and they they have a their nausea or they have diarrhea, and it can be caused by changes of foods, new treats, 
Um, it can be caused by them chewing on something and around the house that you didn't see them do or that you see them chewing on uh, a toy um, or a stick a, a piece of wood uh, some plastic all that stuff can cause diarrhea a plant they might be eating some of your plants out in the garden or house plants in the house and that will cause diarrhea um, what can you do I kinda touched on that you can fast them for a day you can feed them uh, a little bit of white rice several times after 12 to 24 hours you can mix in yogurt with it you can also put a probiotic in there um, a lot of people make the white rice taste a little better by putting in a little broth chicken broth or chicken baby food um, if and uh, if the dog tolerates chicken that's a really good thing to do and then you uh, do that for a couple days and then you can gradually go back to the regular food and hopefully the diarrhea is taken care of anyway we'll check out dog dish diet because I found that food can have a big part in ma uh, major and minor medical problems like chronic itchy skin itchy ears diarrhea like I've talked about um, and urinary tract infections and stones and so um, try to feed your your dogs the best you can and uh, they'll reward you with good health and love of course well have a great day